All right. Now, let's talk about why differential equation is important. Uh, so where is differential equations used? Applications of Well, if you think about it, the entire mechanics, uh, Newton's mechanics, is differential equations. Because what does this say? F equals to ma. Well, right now you have an equation without any derivatives, so that, that's not a differential equation. But think about it this way. What's acceleration? It's the second derivative of the position, right? So if you rewrite this as F equal to m times x double prime, then now we, you have a differential equation. And, and therefore, you can pose questions in mechanics as differential equations, and there are cases where you can only solve it by using <coughs> the differential equations. Now, let me do the quick example where, where you can solve it uh, by other means, uh, but, but let's try to view it as a differential equation. So, for example, uh, a car uh, weighs 2,000 kilograms and is going at, uh, say, uh, 16 meters per second. If the brakes provide, let's see, um, 8,000 newtons of friction force, uh, how long does it travel before stopping completely? Now, I'm trying to make it uh, make the numbers easy so I can do it on the board, but you can certainly think about the case where you, you're Initial speed is given in miles per hour, where you have to change the feet per second, and uh, you may be given uh, the weight as as pounds and all that. Okay, so th there could be some variations where the numbers are messier. Okay, so let's think about this. It's this differential equation, right? Uh, the the force is eight thousand newtons, and the mass is two thousand. And uh, x double prime is what you get. Okay. Now, what what is this? That's uh, before brake was pressed. So you can think of this as the initial <coughs> initial speed, okay. which is what, what's the re relationship between speed and the position, or, or velocity and the position? Velocity is. <coughs> the first derivative, first <coughs> derivative of the position. So it's x prime of zero. Okay. So what you have here is x prime of zero equal to equal to sixteen. Okay. And then uh, here the initial position is not given, so uh, x zero is some some number. But uh, the question here is, what happens to the value of x, what, what, where's the position at, when v becomes 0, when, when x prime becomes 0? That, that's basically the question, right? And therefore, uh, you can just set uh, x0 as 0, and, and that's, that will be giving you uh, the exact coordinate where the, the stopping point is related uh, relative to the initial position. Okay, so let's just uh, put x of zero as zero. I mean, this this is optional. It doesn't change 
the, the answer, even if you set x sub 0 as 1 or 2 or whatever, uh, because we're only interested in the, the, the distance between the initial point where the brake is pressed until where it completely stops. Okay? So that's what we are. <coughs> All right, so this is what, what you have if you translate this entire work problem into differential equation. It's a second order differential equation. By the way, this one is called the second order differential equation because you, you differentiate it twice. So that's the ter terminology. The order of a differential equation is how many times you differentiate it uh, in the equation. Okay? All right, so let's actually solve it. You divide by 2,000. So x double prime is 8,000 over 2,000, which is 4. And I'm, I'm not, I don't have to write any, any uh, units in the solution because uh, all the units are in MKS units. So in that case, uh, everything works fine. Uh, however, if the question had like kilometers per hour here, then you have to convert to meters per second before solving this. Right. So that's what you have. Therefore, what is x? Uh, first, what is x prime? You, you get x prime from x double prime by integrating, right? So if you integrate both sides, you get what? 4? No. 4 plus 16x? No. x is a function of what? Time. 4t. OK. Oh, uh, there, there, there's another thing that I, I messed up. Uh, uh, see, the, the force is going against the car's direction that's moving, right? So you, you should really put the force as negative here. So it should be negative. <coughs> Sorry about that. So it, it's decelerating, not accelerating. Okay. It's decelerating by 4 every second. OK. And then. Uh, to verify what c should be, we can use this. So if I evaluate x prime at 0, meaning that t value is set at 0, and that's equal to 16, we see that c has to be equal to 16. So we get x of t, x prime of t, equals to negative 4t plus 16 after replacing the c equals to 16 here. So that's what we get. That's the speed at each moment. And what we have is still a differential equation. We still need to find out what x is, right? How do you do that? Integrate again. So you have x of t equals to negative 2t squared plus 16t. Yet again, another c. Uh, and I'm not comfortable with having another c here because I already used c for something else. So to distinguish between this integration, con integration constant and that integration constant, Let's put c sub 1 here, and I'll put c sub 2 here. And, and often that's what you do when you have uh, multiple integration constants. OK, then let's use this initial condition. 0 is x sub 0. But what is x sub 0 here? If you plug in 0, 0, what do you get? Everything's 0 except c2. Right? So that's c2. So c2 is 0. And then plugging in c2 equal to 0 here gives you the answer x of t equal to negative 2t squared plus 16t. Okay. And that describes the exact position of the car at each moment after t seconds after the brake is pressed. Okay. Now let's go back to the, the, uh, the question. What is it asking us? Uh, where is the car at when it stops completely? <coughs> Stopping means x prime of x prime is equal to what? Zero. Zero, right? So we have to take this uh, and, and maybe already move to find stopping time. To find stopping time, I set. 
x prime of t equal to 0, which means negative 14 plus 16 is equal to 0. That gives you, uh, if I move the 14 to the other side, I get 16 equals to 14, <coughs> which means t is equal to 4. And once I have t equal to 4, I can plug that back in here. And therefore, the final answer is x of 4 is negative 2 times 4 squared plus 16 times 4. That's 64 minus 32. That's positive 32. And therefore, the answer is uh, well, 32 years. Now, you probably know how to do this already in the context of physics. Because uh, in physics, you learned uh, this formula. What's that? Uh, uh, what does this work? Uh, you have v final squared minus v initial squared equals to 2 times uh, change of the distance times acceleration, right? That, that's what you learned in physics. That's, by the way, this only holds if your acceleration is constant. If uh, acceleration is not constant, you can't, you can't use this. Uh, for, for this question, if you use the, this formula, it's, uh, let's see, final is 0 because you stopped completely. Initial is 16. That's, when, that's the speed of the car when the brakes were pressed. And 2 times delta x times a is 4. Actually, a is negative 4. We figured that out there from there. And, and then if you calculate this, this is negative uh, 256. That's negative 8. So if you divide negative 256 by negative 8, you get positive 32, giving you the same exact answer. So, uh, yeah, that, so, so far, although I, I gave you uh, uh, an application, it doesn't seem that interesting because in physics you had a, an easier way to, to do it. So that, that, uh, that means I have to show you some other examples where it's totally necessary uh, to get to be solved by a differential equation.